Uh, former PIMCO chief economist Paul McCulley, now an adjunct professor at Georgetown, joins us this morning. Paul, always good to check in with you. I know some of those comments were prior to the print. Did this, this morning change anything? No, it didn't. I'm very much in the amen course with what uh, Sarah and Mike were just talking about. I think the really the bottom line after this number is to solidifies the notion of high for longer, not higher for longer, but high for longer. And I think that's what the market has got to get its arms around and fully embrace. And from a starting point of an inverted yield curve, that's not warm and fuzzy for duration risk and therefore is going to have negative knock-on effects for stocks. Not big time, but the fundamental issue is high for longer. Do, the, do some of the risks that have um, developed, say, in the last week, certainly the potholes that we've been on watch for for Q4 strikes and student loans, does any of that weigh on the hawkish side? Yes, I think it do. It does. It increases uncertainty and increases uncertainty on the softer side for the economy after this uh, uh, incredibly strong third quarter. Uh, so I don't think it's a big deal from the standpoint of the numbers per se, but clearly I think it shifts the skew towards uh, risk on the downside, which put, reinforces uh, the uh, proposition that the best course for the Fed is to sit and watch and be comfortable that they have reached a sufficiently restrictive level, they're in a good place. The, the sell-off on the back end of the of treasuries, how impactful is that on things like cost of capital and, and asset prices and growth relative to a rate hike? In other words, they say that's doing the work for them. Is that true? I think it is doing the work. I think it's hard to be precise on these things. You have to be very much ballpark. Uh, and I think President Logan from the Dallas Fed did a fabulous job in that in her speech on Monday. Uh, so the direction of pressure on the economy is the clear reason. Uh, and just, you know, back of the envelope for me, I would say what's happened uh, in the longer end of the curve in the last 60 days is actually more uh, than a 25 basis point hike uh, on the Fed funds rate. Paul, suppose, uh, I suppose part of the uh, increase in yields on the long end has been the market absorbing the higher for longer message and, and maybe not, uh, at least in terms of the pricing, anticipating rate cuts. But still, the market just kind of rolls that ahead a few months and says at some point, if there's going to be an inflection, it's going to be uh, a cut by the Fed. Uh, does the Fed have to work hard to try and, uh, and, and convey their message more forcefully to the market, or is that okay for now for it to be perpetually out there, you know, two quarters away? I think it's okay for now because I don't think the increase in the long end of the curve is just the uh, reassessment to a higher growth path. I think that's part of it, but also think very much part of it is an increase in what is known as the term premium or what should be the normal risk spread between the front end of the curve and the back end of the curve. So I think an increase in the term premium is significant and works very much in favor of the Fed being on hold at a high level. So it's not just you know changing uh, the dots based upon which meeting will they start easing. It's adjusting market pricing to a higher term premium.